When a man chooses to wear a suit without a necktie, do you think there's a correct, a proper way to do this? I think many of us would say there's a correct way to actually do this. Because although most of us would agree this combination looks good, what about this one? Or what if you decide to skip the shirt entirely and go for this look? Yeah, believe it or not, this was trending a few years back. Now, what if I were to tell you every single one of those suit combinations can work in the right situation? Seriously, every single one of them. Gents, it just comes down to avoiding the common mistakes and having the key insights to make this combination look good. First mistake when we're in a suit without a necktie is choosing the wrong shirt. And let me elaborate on this because there's a lot of other items besides a shirt that you could actually wear underneath that suit jacket. T-shirts, Henleys, knitwear like turtlenecks, obviously dress shirts, but also casual button downs. And believe it or not, if you choose the right one, I think even a hoodie can look good under a suit jacket. And in hot weather, one of my favorites, the polo. That being said, let's get specific about shirts. And this one isn't often talked about because it's hard to put your finger on and it is the drape of the fabric. Now, the drape of a fabric is the way that it hangs. You're going to have certain fabrics that are going to have a sheen to them, are just going to have a silky like feel. And these in general are going to look higher end. You have other materials, oftentimes like cotton, which are going to be on the other end of the spectrum, will wrinkle very easily and sometimes have a very rough, just uneven look to them. Now, those type of shirts can look fine when worn in a casual situation. But when trying to wear that type of fabric with a suit, all of a sudden it can give off a vibe. It's oil and water. It just doesn't seem to mix. Now, as many of you guys know, shirt collars come in a wide variety of styles and cuts. But the key to making a shirt collar look great when you're not wearing a necktie is to make sure when you select the collar, this is one that can stand on its own. What you want to avoid is that floppy, dead, lifeless looking color that, yeah, just after a few washes on certain polos, yeah, it's just too soft or it just comes out looking like a floppy piece of bacon. Right with that, you want to pay attention to the placket. The placket is going to be the fold over on the front of the shirt, on a button-up dress shirt, and on some polos, you'll find a strong placket, which again is going to support the collar and keep it upright. Now, gents, as I'm talking about all this, wouldn't it be nice if there was a company that came out with a shirt that had a great collar, that had a great placket, looked amazing whenever you matched it with a sports jacket or a suit jacket or a blazer jacket. In general, when you layer this shirt with anything, it's going to look good. Who am I talking about, gents? Today's sponsor, Collars & Co. Now, gents, for years, I've been talking about Collars & Co because I love what these guys do. Collars & Co designed the perfect shirt with that dress shirt collar, with that front strong placket made from a material that's going to have stretch, it's going to be breathable. In a nutshell, you get the look of a dress shirt without the hassle. And gents, I have to say, personally, I love traveling with these shirts. Here's a picture of me with my daughter, Marina, at her baptism. Notice the shirt I'm wearing right there. That's a Collars & Co. And what I loved about this, it was a hot summer day. It was breathable. I was sweating in this thing, but it wasn't too bad. It had to look good and they're timeless in design. They've got the four most classic collars out there, the English spread collar, the semi-spread, the Oxford button-down and cutaway collars and their colors and pattern choices. Yes, they've got the classics, you've got the blues, you've got the whites, but of course, they've got tons of other great looking patterns and colors depending on what you wear. My suggestion though would be, hey, I already have a white polo. I'm not getting many miles out of it. This would be the one I would start with or maybe a dark blue. Oh, and I talked about innovation, collars and coat was on Shark Tank. In fact, Mark Cuban invested $1 million into this company. I'm also loving their line of sweaters and outerwear, perfect for fall and winter. Now, gents, to make sure you get the best deal on the web, use the code RMRS and that link down in the description of today's video. Again, gents, awesome company, great products. Use that link in the description of today's video. Go over to Collars & Co. Check them out. I just love innovative brands started by entrepreneurs solving a problem and they're incredibly comfortable shirts that look good. But let's talk about that suit without a shirt combination. How to make this look good. Now, my answer is don't even try to do it. Seriously, just think about how bad that suit's got to be smelling after one wear on a hot summer day. But seriously, Seriously, gents, it was a trend just a couple years ago. And whether or not I agree with the look or not, there were guys that were actually pulling this off. Now, I bring up this rule to highlight the biggest mistake a guy can make when wearing a suit without a necktie. And that mistake is when a man forgoes the dress code, but he doesn't have a high enough status to flaunt the rules. Example, those guys wearing those extreme looks. They are rock stars. They're movie stars. They're on the red carpet and they're all about getting their picture taken. Now, if you were to show up to a party dressed like that, unless you're a musician, a creative, or you have the confidence to be able to rock that look and your status is such that no one's going to with you, then yeah, you could be the talk of the party. But for most guys, 
they wouldn't be able to pull this look off. Now, that example may be a little bit too extreme. Let me give you something more practical. If you're a new associate working at a conservative law firm, consulting firm, or bank, and although they may say they don't have a dress code, you notice that all the other men at that firm actually wear a suit and tie. Gents, in this situation, you want to mimic what others are doing. And let me be clear, I'm all about you expressing yourself. But the reality is, even when there's not a dress code, there is an unspoken dress code. And if you're not in a position of leadership or ownership, and especially if you're just getting started and people don't know you, then for sure you want to make sure your dress reflects that of the tribe. Now, the next mistake I see guys making when they're trying to wear a suit without a necktie is that they don't understand the difference between a suit, a sports jacket, or a blazer. Now, I get it. These words are thrown around like they're the same thing. I'm going to quickly bring up an infographic that explains the difference. If you want more information, again, check out the link in the description of today's video. But in general, suits are going to be more formal. Blazers are going to be right under them at levels of formality and sports jackets are going to be the least formal. So, what's the issue? Well, it comes down to what are you going to choose to wear with them and understand that if you're going to be wearing something more casual like a sports jacket, sports tickets don't come with matching trousers. A suit is defined as a jacket and trousers made from the same material. So, in general, sports jackets and to a degree blazers, you're going to have a little bit more freedom of what you can mix and match with them. That being said, there are casual suits made from materials they are going to make them a lot less formal than even some of the sports jackets and blazers out there. My point here is when you understand your base canvas, with a suit, it's a jacket and trousers made from the same material. Suits in general are going to require shoes, shirt, and accessory combinations. They're going to be a little bit darker, a little bit more formal in color. While a sports jacket with jeans would be a great combination for a casual button down. Now, this next mistake may seem obvious, especially if you've watched enough of my videos, you know that, hey, you got to nail the fit of the garment. You've got to make sure that you don't have any stains, that you don't have any wrinkles, that you take care of the clothing. But when you choose not to wear a necktie, you've got to understand that all of a sudden the other items that you're wearing are going to have to speak a little bit louder. Usually, the necktie is drawing the eye and the attention. But because you've chosen not to wear one, if you've got wrinkles on your shirt, if you've got a poorly fitted jacket or shirt, understand that those things could be exaggerated by the fact that there's nothing to draw the eye to. So, iron your shirt steam your jacket, make sure that there aren't any stains and nail the fit. And now, perhaps the most deadly mistake, what really kills the outfit when a guy is trying to wear a suit without a necktie is all of a sudden he has nothing to draw the eyes to. I alluded to it earlier, but the point of a necktie is to bring the collar together and the collar was designed to work with a necktie hundreds of years ago. In fact, we go back, you know, during the French, we see the Croats, we see them wearing these neck pieces. It was all about signaling what units you were with. There is a long history of cravats and all different types of neckwear bringing the collar together. And if you think about it, the well-tied necktie, what's it doing? It's pointing people right at the face. That's where you want them to look, right? So, understand, when you decide to not wear a necktie, this can be, for many people, an incomplete look unless you bring in some additional accessories. And I don't think it has to be a whole lot. It could be a nice watch. That could be your go-to piece. Maybe you want to bring in a pocket square. I always think that this is really nice and you don't have to go for a puff or anything like that. Another option is to choose a shirt with a splash of color. Maybe even go with contrasting buttons or button threading. And for those of you guys who are a little bit more fashion forward, have fun with your footwear or like my friend Greg here, maybe even bring in a necklace. So, now let's go over specific examples of how to style a suit without a necktie, the items that you could pair with it. So, first up, we've got the classic dress shirt. Now, dress shirts are distinguished from casual button downs in that dress shirts are going to be made from a very tight woven cotton and in general are going to be lighter in color, most commonly white, sometimes light blue. Now, I know over the last 70 years that definition has expanded to pretty much any shirt made from a tight woven cotton that is worn with a suit. So, that's why we see pink dress shirts, lavender dress shirts, black dress shirts, dark blue dress shirts and of course, tons of different stripes, checks and a variety of other patterns. To keep it simple, I'll say this. If you're going to go with a dark suit and you go with a white shirt, that contrast is going to create a more formal overall feel. Now, I know tons of guys like this look, but the key, again, we talked about the mistakes, is you got to make sure that shirt has a strong placket and it has a collar that can support itself. If the shirt's made from a tight woven poplin, 
or broadcloth, you're on the right track. And again, if you're just getting started, the easiest color to start with is white. Right after that, light blue and then darker colors such as black or navy. Now, if you decide to wear that darker colored dress shirt and you wear it with a dark colored suit, you want to make sure the colors complement each other. That being said, if you're wearing a light colored suit, maybe in light gray, I can see we're wearing that black shirt actually is a great look. Again, this is going to be more casual because of the casual nature of the suit and the shirt overall. Um, yeah, a nice look. Next up, we've got the polo shirt. What I like about this in warmer in hot weather, they're just very comfortable, very easy to wear. Now, again, with a lot of polos out there with a soft collar made from cotton, you got to be very careful about how those collars are going to hold up, especially the front placket area. Now, a lot of people say, well, hey, what about the cuff? Because whenever you're wearing a polo, obviously in most situations, it's short sleeve. Well, the answer is don't worry about it. That rule doesn't apply when you're wearing a polo. Now, when it comes to colors and patterns, the same rules as apply to dress shirts, I would keep it simple. Start with a white, maybe start with a dark blue. Look at the shirts that you're already wearing with your suits in your wardrobe and just mimic those. All that being said, once you become more comfortable with this look, with the overall all feel, then that's when you can bring in a variety of different colors and patterns. Next up, we've got casual button downs. Often confused with dress shirts, there is a different dress shirts usually made from poplin or broadcloth. They're going to have a tighter weave. They also are going to have a stronger collar and placket that's more structured. That being said, you'll see a lot of casual button downs, especially with the button down collar being worn with a suit on occasion, even with a necktie. Now, personally, what I love about casual button downs is the variety of different materials. And if you're going to be wearing a sports jacket, maybe even a blazer, it's an easy way to be able to still have a collared shirt, but to bring the entire look down. And they really work well in general without neckties, especially with the button down collar because it keeps the collar flap out of the way and overall is a great classic combination to wear with a jacket without a tie combination. And what about shirts without collars? In particular, t-shirts and Henleys. So, I'm going to be straight up, gents. We're in a t-shirt with a suit jacket. I'm not going to recommend for the majority of people out there. I think this look was popularized by people that could just simply pull off the look and they were, again, in a status position. They owned the company. They founded the company. They were out in Silicon Valley and they had to meet with the bankers. So, they threw on a jacket, but they still wore their t-shirts underneath. The reality is most of us probably aren't in that situation. That being said, if you still want to pull the look off, then look for the right type of t-shirt. You're going to want a shirt that's clean, that fits well, and is made from a thicker heavier cotton. These type of t-shirts usually cost a premium. They're going to have a really nice drape to them. And again, that's what you're looking for. The mistake you want to avoid is wearing a t-shirt that wrinkles up. Another option here is to wear a knit t-shirt. This is going to be a higher end t-shirt, sometimes made from wool, other times from linen, from materials that are, it's knit in a way. These are going to be high end shirts. It can sometimes cost over $200, but they've got a beautiful drape to them and they oftentimes have contours. They've got curves. They sometimes even have a textured weave, which again, gives them a more complex look. I remember having one of these and overall, it was just a beautiful shirt that yes, didn't have a collar, but I could still, I feel, wear it with the right suit jacket. Now, Henleys, I think look great, but they're really really hard to wear with a suit jacket or sports jacket, although it can be done. Again, if it's you just simply want to look good in a meeting, you own the company. I do think Henleys in general look better. Just make sure it's not worn out. Again, you want to make sure it doesn't have wrinkles. It's got a good drape, maybe made from a higher end material. Yeah, in the right situation, you're the CEO, you've got a Monday meeting, you got to throw on the jacket. Yeah, in that case, I think you could pull this off. Now, what about sweaters? Well, the V-neck worn with a collared shirt, I just see that as a layered look. But I do think a crew neck or maybe even a V-neck. I don't know. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. Worn with like a t-shirt underneath, yeah, you could pull that off with a sports jacket. That being said, my favorite piece of knitwear to wear with a jacket has to be the turtleneck. Now, the key with wearing knitwear underneath a jacket is to go with something that has a very lightweight build. These are sweaters made from a merino wool or maybe a cashmere that in general are made to be layered, made to be worn underneath something. They're not made for outer wear. If anyone's ever owned a heavyweight or an Aaron sweater, you know what I'm talking about. That kind of, you know, cable knit sweaters that are heavy and bulky like that aren't really made well for layering. Now, the reason I love the turtleneck with a jacket is because it does have a collar. Yes, it's a piece of material. It's that fabric that goes up along the neck. But I do think that that, again, it elongates the neck and it really works well with a jacket silhouette. Wet. Now, what about hoodies? When I said this earlier, I'm sure some of you guys winced or like Antonio, that's never going to work. You know, the hoodie's been around a long time and there are so many higher end, well-fitted hoodies made from cashmere, made from a wool that I think almost look like 
beautiful sweaters. And yeah, if you're going for a more casual, you're a younger guy that wants to be able to wear this combination, I think it can work. And if you're interested in hearing the details of how to wear a hoodie, the history, guys, check out this video right here. I break out the hoodie, its secret history, and how any man can pull it off. I talk about hoodies that would look great on you. Guys, check out this video. I think it's a really good one. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn anything about hoodies, how to look good in them, check it out. Boom, right there. Oh, yeah.